Oh, look at that. What a cute little jellyfish. But did you know that this cutie is the most venomous creature in the whole world? Welcome to another episode of Dangerous Doobly Doos! This is Australia, home of the koalas, kangaroos, didgeridoos, outback steakhouse, and the crikey. But Australia is also home to many different species of jellyfish, some lethal and others not. On January 20th of 1955, a five-year-old boy in Cardwell, Australia was stung by an unidentified jellyfish. Within minutes, he was frothing at the mouth and paralyzed. Unfortunately, he passed away shortly after. Terrified North Queensland toxicologist Dr. Hugo Flecker found the distinctive box-shaped perpetrator and identified it as a new genus of lethal jellyfish. He named it Chironex flecari, the Greek chiro meaning hand, and the Latin nex for murderer. But other species of box jellyfish have since been identified all across the world. These include California, Hawaii, the Mediterranean Sea, Japan, South Africa, and, of course, New Zealand. So, the box jelly isn't really one species, it's a whole class of organisms titled Cubozoa. And since they look like boxes, cubes. Cubozoa. But not all box jellies are venomous. We'll be focusing on the largest and most dangerous of the Cubozoans, Dr. Flecker's Fleckeri, the big one. This creature has killed an estimated 100 or more people across the world every single year, and many scientists believe the number of deaths to be truly underestimated. Just look at him, square, the shape of evil. But it's the toxins that the box jelly boasts that earn it the title of the most venomous animal in the entire world. Each tentacle of the box has about 5,000 stinging nematocyst cells, little harpoon cells that shoot into their prey and deliver a deadly chemical payload. Just to give you reference, this toxin's LD50, or the dose that kills half of test subjects, is 0.04 milligrams per kilogram. For reference, the already extremely deadly coral snake boasts a venom with an LD50 of 1.3 milligrams per kilogram. This means the box jelly's toxins are 32.5 times more deadly than the coral snakes. This deadly venom causes our cells to leak potassium through our ion channels, resulting in too much potassium in our bloodstream. This is a medical condition called hyperkalemia, and contact with just two meters of tentacle will stop heart and lung function completely within two to five minutes. So without immediate medical attention, it's not a question of if you will die, but when. But there's a bit more to the box than even just its deadly toxins. As you will see here, it is exceptional in other ways as well. Box jellyfish measure up to 10 feet long and 10 inches across, weighing up to about 4.4 pounds. And to this end, there's nothing particularly special about them compared to other jellies. Perhaps slightly bigger than the average jelly, but that's not exceptional, right? But there's more than meets the eye here. Box jellyfish have 20 simple eyes that differentiate between light and dark. And in addition to these eyes, they sport four true eyes. These include complete lenses, retinas, and corneas. They're found in clusters that we call ropalia in the animal, about in the center of the jellyfish itself. Now, they use their own transparent bodies as lens to see the outside, so these jellyfish have kind of a understandably blurry vision. One eye is always facing up in each cluster, and one is facing down. This allows the box jellies to orientate themselves in the water column. Consequently, box jellyfish have strong obstacle avoidance capabilities and can swim directionally to track their prey. The fastest box jellyfish swimming has been documented to swim faster than any Olympic swimmer alive, jetting up to four knots through the water column. So here we have a creature that is extremely dangerous with specialized true eyes. But like other jellyfish, it doesn't have a brain. How could that be, you ask, that it can do such complex actions unlike other jellyfish? with no brain at all. Box jellyfish are known to exhibit active fish-like behavior. They even sleep at night on the ocean floor, then wake up to feed and hunt during the day. How do they do this? Well, they don't have a brain, but they do have a nervous system. 
Box jellyfish have a specialized nervous system that is only observed in one other species, the crown jellyfish. This is a nerve ring around the bottom of the bell that can control pulsing, movement, and integrate vision with all of their other senses. But that doesn't mean that their vision or sensing is perfect, and this has profound implications for human encounters. Australian jellyfish expert Jamie Seymour conducted some tests on this jelly. He put two white poles into a tank, at which the jelly was unable to detect them and swam right into them. He then put two black poles into the tank. The box swam perfectly around them in a figure eight motion. A red pole repelled the jellyfish and it kept its distance. The results? Red somehow works to repel these dangerous creatures. So today, Australian researchers use red safety nets at beaches to repel these jellies. So now we know, box jellyfish cannot easily detect lighter objects because of their contrast-based detection systems. Their vision is blurry, so they need as much contrast between the object and the environment to see. This gives us some helpful advice for avoiding getting stung. What you wear can either save you or get you killed. People's clothing color can increase the risk of being stung by box jellyfish. For example, if a person with lighter colored clothes meets a box jellyfish, they run a large risk of being stung. A person who wears dark clothes will contrast with the light coming into the water and in the box's vision. The jelly will then detect that you are not prey and they will swim away to avoid the person safely. You see, they don't mean any harm to humans and have been shown to avoid us whenever possible. The issue is that their vision is not perfect at all and can cause really severe complications. So black wetsuits are definitely in for this season. But at the end of the day, so what? How does this information pertain to us? You and I, we couldn't normally come in contact with these creatures while we're going about our business, right? Well, not quite. Global warming has increased the amount of interactions we have with cnidarians, like the box jellyfish. And this is because jellyfish thrive in warmer environments. The Australian box jelly season has already been increased from May all the way to July. So we can now find these deadly creatures in the early summer. This means we will continue to have more and more run-ins with these deadly cubozoa if the global trend continues in the way that it has. Sea turtles aren't really complaining though. They are unaffected by the stings of these jellyfish and can eat them for a tasty meal. At least this cloud has some silver lining. But that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Dangerous Doobly Doos. Today's question, which do you want me to cover next? The domineering orcas or the legendary mantis shrimp? Drop a comment below. As always, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. Check out our marine conservation apparel store at moretus.com to cop some sustainable merch and support the ocean, all while looking clean. Clean vibes, clean looks, clean oceans. Until next time. <laughs>